Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. This is a very special mailbag today. This is a thank you mailbag because all these packages were sent to me by Banggood and I did not pay anything for it because this is now really sponsored by you, my viewers. Thank you very much for that. Because if you use the link in my videos to order something from Banggood, you do not pay more, but I get a small commission and I can buy stuff for my channel. So let's start to open these packages. Let's start with the biggest one. Very well packaged. One is a Orico power supply for USB. Four ports, USB charging station, one ampere, one ampere, and two ampere here. So two are two ampere and two are one ampere. Now I will not use these for um, for charging, but I use these now more and more for pow for powering my uh, different devices because the ESPs usually I run on five volt and also the raspberries I run on 5 volt and I do not want to have for each and every a power supply because this is not very economic so I ordered a bigger one with four I can power now four different devices and let's check if I got the European plug yes I got the European plug I like this Orico uh, brand because it is a high quality brand and uh, I know what I get the next one is even bigger. It has six ports. This one had 30 watts and this one has even 50 watts. Nice looking. One, two, uh, two, four, six. And four times two ampere and two times one ampere. And together a maximum of uh, 10 ampere, which is quite a lot for this small device. It's really a very good build quality, very nice looking, perfect thing. And I think here it is an LED. But now the biggest package here. I know what's inside. Ah. This is a solar panel, 1.6 ampere, 18 volt, and it is flexible. That is very interesting. It's really uh, very flexible, so it, you cannot destroy it easily. And it has this huge connectors. And this is why I ordered also these cables. Now these cables are an overkill for this one ampere because <laughs> they are huge diameter. I think they are worth at least 15 or 20 ampere and also the plugs are really huge. But it's obviously the standard for solar panels. It's the first time I have such a, a solar panel and I We'll experiment with it. Uh, this is uh, probably for my gateway, for my LoRa gateway, because the LoRa gateway, of course, needs much more power than a normal ESP or an ESP in deep sleep. For these, I have smaller solar panels. Next one is a small one. What do you think this is? Now you see it probably. It's the housing for my Raspberry Pi Zeros. Because for the moment they are just laying around and I have two of them and uh, 
viewers of my channel know that I use one of them for my as an MQTT hub and I wanted to have it in a small case. We will see how this looks. So this is now the Raspberry Zero housing. Now the screws are quite short. They hardly come out here. So I will do a small improvement here. Just a small improvement and I hope now that the screws will be a little bit longer. Now this first Pi Zero is packaged. It looks nice. Just the one minor thing. I think this is not at the correct place. But it was probably not possible to go close to this one. Otherwise, uh, they would have lost here stability. So this is probably a compromise. And you get them also in blue and in black. I think. But, uh... And of course, when everything was finished, I discovered that it is much nicer looking if you remove this foil. <laughs> yeah, shit happens. I'm sure you guys had a good laugh when you looked at uh, what I did before. Uh, it's a big difference. This is not necessary and now it's really shiny. You see, that happens when an electronic engineer has to do some mechanical stuff. Next one. Lots of paper and SD cards. 16 gigabyte SD card. This is a original Samsung. This is a knockoff. This is another knockoff. Uh, high speed. And this is the same. So I plan to do a small test of these SD cards because now uh, in this Raspberry Pi stuff you need more uh, SD cards because usually you just have one SD card for a particular image uh, like the Diet Pi image or something like that. And um, I learned that the speed of these cards is quite important and I want to check if, how the speed compare to an, uh, from an original Samsung to a knockoff and to another knockoff and also whether it makes a difference in the Raspberry Pi Zero and in the Raspberry Pi 3. Next one. Now this is quite interesting. The return address is <laughs> at a very nice place. I would, uh, be, I would like to be returned here to the Seychelles. This is uh, one of my dream uh, destinations. I probably will never arrive there. But these packages might arrive there. But let's open it. Very well packaged. Orange pie. Now I read that the orange pie is a quite a good device and a new generation of mini PC. So let's look what's inside. This is really an Orange Pi Zero. And this is a USB hub for the Orange Pi Zero. So let's quickly check. Oh! <laughs> A nice little antenna here. So this device should be comparable with a Raspberry Pi Zero, but it should be faster. And this plugs here. And we still have the breakout uh, pins here. So it's 26 breakout pins. I have to check how compatible they are with the uh, Raspberry, but I don't think. Okay, nice looking. I will use this uh, also 
for an MQTT broker because a few viewers said this is the better deal and if it works like the other one then uh, you should know it and then you can decide whether you want to go with a Raspberry Pi Zero which always has uh, some issues with availability or with this Orange Pi Zero which is easily available. And this is a scope meter, whatever this is. Uh -huh. Some leads. It's a multimeter waveform display multimeter. Oh, but I think we have, we have a clue here. It is 2 giga ohm. 2 giga ohm is not a normal thing for a normal multimeter. So let's open it. So the 2 giga ohm and also 750, 1000 volt, 500 volt, 250 volt. Now this is a device to test the safety of power supplies. I never did this so far, I trusted the power supplies I bought, but these days uh, with the power supplies from China, it's probably good to test them. It's not like a fluke, the quality is, uh, the plastic looks quite cheap, but still, if it does what it is supposed to do, then it's okay because this will not be used uh, every day. This is a special, a very special product which will be used once in a while. So the, the quality of the, of the housing is not so important and it was not uh, very expensive. It is also some sort of a knockoff. So the next one. All the same packaging principle, but actually it works not bad. It is a Raspberry Pi 3. As I said in a former video, for me this is cheaper to buy it at Banggood because I do not pay any, uh, no shipping fee. And uh, here in Europe I have to pay quite a lot of shipping fee. So, a normal Raspberry Pi 3. But what is the rest? Also a nice housing, acrylic glass. We will see how this looks later on, but also some cooling stuff. So this is a real cool Raspberry Pi. If this Fan works here. This is a uninterruptible power supply for the Raspberry. And it might be that I can switch off all my lab equipment during night, but still power the Raspberry during night. I don't know how long it will last uh, on the Raspberry Pi 3. But um, we will check out. Now the last one. Oh, many small things. This is a neat small thing, tiny thing. And it is a orange pie housing for this orange pie. It is also for the USB shield. So we will see how this works out. So with this knowledge, let's go on to the next mechanical challenge. Maybe it's a little bit faster. Now we have a small diet pie SD card, nicely labeled. And now we want to power it up. For that, of course, we use one of these new 
USB hubs and we power it up. Now the first question is, how can we monitor the whole thing? Because other than the Raspberry Pi, it has no HDMI connector. So you see this mailbag is really try and error. Uh, also here I made a mistake because I, I uh, didn't uh, recognize that it has no HDMI. I didn't look at it. Then I had to go back and uh, take it apart. And I needed a small FTDI converter on, pay attention, on 3.3 volt. Not all work on 3.3 volt. Pay really attention. I use these. I put a link in the description. They have really also 3.3 volt at TX pin. And now the whole thing boots up and I can log into uh, Diet Pi. So what's a summary of the experiment here? The price of the Orange Pi is about $14 with a 512 megabyte RAM. The price is comparable to the Pi Zero. This one has a Ethernet jack. You have just one normal USB. So from a point of view of connectors, this one is better, but you do not have a HDMI. So if you want to run headless, then it's probably a good idea. It has also Wi-Fi. The housing itself is nice looking, but it's hard to mount. I'm not sure if things get hot in it. So I'm not sure if this is a universal thing here. And maybe I will print my own later on. But for the moment, it's okay. And of course, it works. We were able to install DietPy and I will also make a test comparing the speed of the two devices because I think this is also important. And I will run uh, Peter's installation script on both in parallel with exactly the same SD card. Now here there are some, there is some small stuff. They are power indicator for LiPo batteries. They show you how much charge you still have in your LiPo batteries. And uh, I thought this is a good idea. And here is a different one. This is uh, bigger. Oh, this is nice looking. And it's also for a guy like me, because I do not need uh, any lenses to read that. It has a decent size. But the, the principle is the same. It shows here we have four and here we have four LEDs and both should show the charge of, of, the, of the LiPo batteries. I, if I remember right, they are for 3.7 and for 7.4. They are different versions. I ordered for 3.7 for the ESPs and 7.4 for the 5 volt devices. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.